hospitals, you're not rushing to make a film with just acrylics. <laughs> with a strong job of that. That's a big job of that. These things. Some of you will have seen it before, and it's an excellent demonstration on the artist. Sorry, we really can't do that. I hope so too. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. I can meet you miles from here. Right, and the usual break um, is about uh, 15 minutes, and that's about half. I'll only just carry on painting food for 10 minutes. So, um, so the clinics tonight, and you say that it's beautiful colours. Uh, people just love to see my palette because it's like a box of sweeties. Yeah, <laughs> lovely colours for a start. Um, now you see, they're not falling out of the opening. They're not falling out of the, of the palette. and you can use them with a knife, but you've got more versatility. So you can use them with a sponge and so on, which is much more difficult for oils to clean that, obviously. So everybody at Clinic, so all my watercolour set here, you'll see I've got a whole pile of brushes but here. I've only got some rakes, which are very handy, you all colour shall know. I don't go down as the finest combs with the bullets. <coughs> Painting knives, um, and filberts and flats, long handled, nylon, and rounds. Now the sets that I use, and I recommend what's spares here, if anybody does want them, these are for oils and acrylics. Try and keep them separate, don't use them for oils and acrylics, the same brushes for the other, it makes them, it doesn't work too well. The filberts, so nine brushes, six filberts and four rounds, or six flats and four rounds. These brushes here are all... You have to put you in. So let's have a look at these then. So you've got a picture like this that is very, very complicated, or looks it. But in fact, if we do this in the um, method I'm going to show you, and I call it my jigsaw method in most of my painting, whether I'm using it at the sponge holder or not, because what I do is draw it out fairly carefully, just the outlines as you see here. Just the outlines. And... Um, if you do a bad drawing, so it's a matter of less being better, if you've got a few good marks and you're working within those, if your drawing is bad to start with and you paint loosely, you tend to make things even worse. So try to get a fairly good drawing to start with, um, unless you're really, really good and you just go straight in. But if I'm painting a plan, uh, from life, I usually just go straight in. I do just to get a basic composition. So I work out all of the basic composition here, and then I'll use the sponge roller to work out the effect of light and what I tend to do is work from my mid-tones in all my painting down to my darks and then back from my mid-tones out to my lights at the end. The beauty of that is, the fun of it is, the painting must be fun, surely, you know, we've got to have fun, is that um, you're painting with light at the end. You no longer paint with paint at the end of the painting because when you start putting all these lights in and the highlights, it just appears, which is, which is the beauty of painting in that way. So mid-tones down to darks and mid-tones up to lights. So when I put all the background done with the roller, as you're going to see in a minute, I then go back with my flats usually and slab in the paint. And that again, the beauty again is these lovely slabs of paint with the heavy body, like oils you, you can get, over the thinner paint in the background. So it's rather nice to have this. So what are we playing with in, in painting? We're playing with light next to dark. We're playing with rough next to smooth. We're playing with warm next to cool. And also within that, when I've got a, a colour on my brush, use it everywhere. Don't do what and I've, I've had to judge many exhibitions in the past. And quite often I find a problem where people have put something in afterwards. And they've painted it in a different style, a different way. They put a dog in and it stands out like a sore thumb. You stuck it on and cut it out, you know. So we want the effects of light first. And I'm going to start with my mid-tones and work wherever the colour is on my brush or my roller. I'm going to work in like this with the big umbrellas and so on, it's gone on with the sponge roller, thinly, and then I've hammered in with the paint afterwards with the flats, and gradually brought these highlights out. So you can do it with a smaller canvas. If you're doing much smaller than this one, though, you're better off probably just don't use that. You might not have to use it at all, but it's much better to use one colour against another. So with my highlights, I'm playing with very, very light tints of cream, pink, light blue, green, so on, and how the light reflects on one thing to another, how you've got green coming into the water, how 
light bounces off and reflects off one thing to another, so the green leaves will be reflecting into the water, the blue sky coming through will be reflecting into there, and so on. We've got reflections to think about. So there's quite a bit going on. And now, I want to get on with the painting. Right. First thing is, how to use the paints if you're going to use a roller. It's very straightforward by experience. So I want to start with the background. And every single colour has a hue. There's a good, really good bloke, this bloke called Hugh. Uh, he's got all sorts of colours, warm and cold. That's his moods. But we can, uh, well, if I hold this part up, we can see it in there. That is a cool yellow, lemon yellow. That chrome yellow is a very warm yellow. We go towards the red, we get orange. Warmer still, we get the cadmium. Then we go cooler again, down to magenta, and down towards the purples. And the purple becomes cooler because it's got more blue in it. So, and the, the green's the same, a warm brownie green, or a very blue turquoise. So every single colour has a warm and cool hues going through it, and you need to understand those. And that is what we're going to be doing, because I want to pull out the difference in these warm sunlit leaves and the ones that are reflecting the sky. That's quite important, we're going to see all of these colours. And it's not just... Blue is what kids do. You know, brown cow, blue water, green leaves, brown trees. These colours are coming one into another. This colour here, I can see lots of little leaves reflecting it. And here it's in the branches, here it's in the trees. The darks and the, 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 the pinks here are coming through into the water here. And here, you've got to really look for colour. And I work very, very quickly. I have to make very fast judgments, especially painting out of doors, because you know how long you get. And I was amazed to get, what did I have, eight hours on that big one with the, the dafts recently. That's the longest I've painted for years. We had that good week of weather a few weeks ago, yeah? And I actually had four hours a day to paint. Wow, it was fantastic. Don't wet your sponge when you start off, but dry it. Don't have a wet sponge, otherwise you hit the canvas and the water comes all down it. This is the way I work with um, watercolour and acrylic inks and pastel quite often. When I've been using, I was doing a, I was in New Zealand, had three months painting in New Zealand and an exhibition there and um, doing workshops. And I was at a primary school. It was absolutely wonderful you know, because I played the two whistles and I played the big Overton and I was playing their anthem. And the school children were singing the anthem for me as I played. And, oh, God, I was almost in tears. You know, it was incredible. Um, but <laughs> I was doing this uh, acrylic ink for them. And with acrylic inks, as you probably know, you've got to keep them wet. It's a diffuser. Because once acrylic ink's dry, you can't move them. You can with watercolour. And, of course, you can use pastel and water, which is another one I'm very, very fond of. If I go abroad, I usually take my big set of unisons and just hot press watercolour paper. Then I can use watercolours, or I can use the pastels, or I can use the pastel and water. In this case, I was doing an acrylic ink and working up all the background with that, and then I was going to work pastel over the top. And as I was doing it, I was spraying, but I was talking to you like that, not really watching, and I kept going, you know, like that. And then the kids were laughing, I'm like, what's going on? And I looked around, the cow was going down here, like this was moving down the paint with too much water. <laughs> but anyway, we, we succeeded in dragging it back. So I'm going to use now a little bit of turquoise into that. And I just test it up here so you can just get an idea of the colour. Lovely pale. I've already dampened my uh, sponge roll. And what I want to show you, when we first start off, so I'm working from my midtones out and down to darks, I shouldn't have to wash the roller until I get down to my darks. Then I need to wash it if I'm going to go back up again to lighter colours. You find you can get away with this with, with hardly washing the roller at all. It's hardly messy. The important thing is, when you start off, don't waste your paint. Like, if this is all enough. Like that. And then, are we there? Yes. And then roll the brush through, sorry, roll the roller through both the brush and the paint you've mixed. Now, you can get quite nice variations of how much you push or when you've got more than one colour on, or you get all sorts of uh, uh, nice accidents and variations. But that's the way is to not waste the paint in the brush and to use it right up. Now, if I use it thinly, I'm just going to have to up a bit somewhere. Um, if I use it thinly, let's go back to here. So that's, that's, not, that's not, not a lot on the roller, and because I'm using it thinly, you can actually still see the drawing underneath. Because you think, oh dear, you know, they've done all that drawing, you're going to lose it all, and that's what happens with the thicker paint, doesn't it? 
So this way it's not so bad. And you can gradually work it up and still be able to see. So at first it uses a bit more paint. At first it definitely does. Until you actually get going. I've got so many colours it's really lovely. I don't have to have all these colours. But there are some colours you can't do without. And let's just talk about that a minute. Um, if you want to make a purple, we are told at school it's red and blue. But no. If you use a warm red like cadmium and blue, especially a warmer blue like um, ultramarine, you're going to end up with almost a brown. If you want a lovely purple, you've got to have magenta and you've got to have a turquoise or a cerulean, okay? So these are things, if you're not sure, if you didn't know, and it can change with watercolours and things as well, because you can make a beautiful grey using uh, alliterin crimson and viridian green. Gives a lovely either warmer, greener, or, 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 or warmer um, pink grey. But it's great for skies, and you would never think of using that as a grey. Um, greys normally are browns and blues. You wouldn't be using black and white, because you're using colours to balance. I don't normally use black in most of my paintings, and haven't done. I use Prussian blue, um, either a or or burnt umber, um, or raw umber, uh, because I get a lovely dark with that. But then I'll come down to my um, black at the very, very end. So let's just a little bit more of that going. A little touch of processed yellow. Let me know when you get that primed again and we get going. So I'm putting on nice thin layers at the moment. I'm not going to worry about these leaves too much. I might just put a little bit on so I know where I am. Uh, so that, that tree's going to through there. So I'm putting undercolour, and you see that actually my, my uh, mixing. My roller is giving a slightly mottled effect because I've not been absolutely thorough deliberately and I haven't deliberately um, made it absolutely boring and plain. Now you all know about controlled accident in watercolour. You know, you use controlled accident as much as you can to make lovely effects. A bit the same here. Let's deliberately now, and there's a bit of green with that, a bit more of that light blue. And I'm going to just roll my roller roll partially through it and let's just see what happens now. Uh, and you see that, that lovely variety of mark I get. Straight away we've got stronger green, we've got lighter green, uh, bluer, I want some more of the green coming into here. We're getting this atmosphere, I'm getting an effect of light. I want to paint, like I do with my watercolour often, because I often paint watercolour wet into wet first of all, to get the effect of light. So you can smudge them and look you can do. And I'm being quite rough, don't worry about going over the lines a bit because you can see where you are. I don't have to do this and I'm going to do it uh, mainly with um, slabs of paint just so I can show you how you can use this lovely impasto over this with these heavy bottles. <coughs> this is just going to give you an idea of well, that light blue wants to be behind there. There is an amazing amount of colours going on in this. I'm going right over these branches at the moment because I'm going to go back with my um, sponge roller afterwards. Whatever the colour is, there's a bit of green coming in the grass here, let's get it started off, coming through these, the browns and so on on here. It's not just brown, orange, you've got the green actually coming into this tree and coming down onto that <coughs> rock there. So again, you know, we can get other effects, we can use water and pastel, would be a lovely one with this because I could use the water and the pastel, but I do know about water and soft pastels. If you, pastels are made by having a very fine pink, not as fine as watercolour, but the same sort of thing, and you mix gum arabic, the same as this with your watercolours. If you put more gum arabic in your watercolour mixes or into your water, your, your watercolour colours will be much richer and stronger and darker. If you want to do a wash of watercolour and not have it move, you use acrylic medium in it, and then that wash won't move at all if you want preliminary washes. But putting a bit more gum arabic in will give it that dark, that extra bit of, of deep gloss if you need it. And I can use my finger whenever I want. If you don't want to be left with any snow, make sure that you do cover your... There's nothing worse when you're doing this and having some snow left and, and your, the white of the canvas showing through mistily. It really fights the painting. Don't want that. So this is something you can do outside. Or you can treat it in exactly the same way with your fingers, with a brush, cloths. This way of working, of the jigsaw method of putting the right colours in the right shapes in the right places. But what I'm doing differently here is that I'm just building up a more misty background for it rather than just blocking in all those shapes straight away. You start to see the light coming now. It's already we're starting to get an atmosphere and that's what we want is uh, the feeling of the place, not so, not so much a copy. It's not a photograph. 
Well, I got myself into trouble with Driffield on that, and I had to apologise afterwards. I want to go back up to the light blues. I'm going to take some cerulean now. And this, the beauty of the blues. I mean, we've got so many beautiful blues on here. If, if you imagine, and this is, and this is, it is very useful. But if I just do it here, there's some cerulean. There's some turquoise, almost green. Here's some um, deep turquoise. Here's some uh, ultramarine, and then a slightly a, a much. This is now. This is two different makes of ultramarine. Look, and the difference in those two. That's just two different makes. It's much darker that one. Then we can come down to the Prussian. And the variety I've got with that, then we come to the bluer greens. I mean, that is a, a bluer green. If we go to a warmer green, you can see what I mean about how the slabs are going to come afterwards. That's just to give you an idea. And we can blend with our finger, we can blend any time we want. So I can take my roller and just rub those in. Don't be afraid of the painting. It's, it's there for you, for you to play with and manipulate and have fun with. But it can write through those leaves. Now, when you have your cup of tea in a quarter of an hour, I should just carry on. So, you know, you can chat amongst yourselves, or better still, chat and just come and watch what I'm doing if you like. Ask about the brushes, the DVDs, anything here as well. This is the time. Go stronger, magenta again, and a little yellow ochre. I could go onto the lighter yellows, chrome or something, but I want a fairly dark um, warm down here at the moment. So, I'm using a mid magenta now to yellow ochre. Let's see what we get. That might be too warm still. We'll have a look and see. So down here, yeah, it's still a bit light. But we'll, we'll just get these colours going. Let's see what we've got. That's better. Now, in a landscape, normally in daytime, we have warm, cooler, 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 in, in focus, more and more out of focus. The opposite to that would be, I, I'm going to pounce on you, what would the opposite be to the normal daylight where we've got warm in the foreground and cool in the background? Uh, warm in the background? Yeah, but when would that be? Uh, Sunrise, sunset. Yeah. Yeah. Strong this stuff. I'll take a bit of burnt sienna, my lovely colour burnt sienna. There are so many ways to paint. I could paint like Rembrandt, well, not just like Rembrandt, but I could use his palette. Um, for instance, if you've got your, 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 your brain switched on now, black becomes blue, blue is black and white, red is burnt sienna, yellow is yellow ochre, green is raw umber, brown is burnt umber, black is burnt umber and amber black because the black on its own is the blue. And believe me you can paint an entire painting like that with those few colours just working them one to another. It's called a limited palette. As I say, we should just use black and white, but that just you know, gives you the full range. But ever so subtle, you've got to really think about it. Mm -hmm. I've done full portraits with it, but too full. And it does have a lovely coherence, that's the beauty of it. And that's what we want to be doing, is opening your... I try to choose the best method and medium for the subject. Um, so, you know, if I'm doing a watercolour, if I wanted to do a really dark, wet, rainy sky, then what better than wet into wet watercolour for Scotland or something like that? Um, but if I want to do something like this, then the acrylics or oils are ideal. Let's go even stronger still, isn't it? Whatever you're ready, Peter. Okay, well, if you, uh, you can carry on having cups of tea now, then, and I'll have a cup of coffee. I'm just going to carry on. Yeah. You come and ask me questions or watch or whatever you like to do. Yep, and you can do uh, Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, if you come up, just watch the cables. These paints, as I say, most of them paints are in the specialist paints. I do use others, I've done all I want to do with my sponge roll. I'm going to go on to brushes now to start to pull out the branches and the twigs. Then I'm going to go back to my ordinary sea sponges and do the leaves. And then I'm going to come back in with the big brushes to put the big leaves in. That's the beauty of the flats and the filberts is you can use them as a flat. You can use the edge as a blade. 
So that, you know, of course, that shape of the pilgrims is also the shape of the leaves. So I, you know, I often use the flats just to do my figures and things like that. But the pilgrims are very useful in this kind of thing. Fine sponge, first of all. Now, this is another difficult thing getting good sponges because you go to the art shops uh, and they've got bags of sponges, but there might only be one in there that's worth having. So, really look at the bags carefully. Or if you find a seashell sea shell shop, then uh, they've often got separate sponges and you can really choose good ones there. But you do want to get a nice, furry, you know, it's no good having like a bath sponge, it's got to be lovely and furry, you see. So, that's quite a fine one. It's very important because if you just get a bath sponge, it's got holes and not things that come out. It wants to be that moss, not, not a holy one, unless you want that texture. So using the moss now, just get down the edge in, don't go, you know, don't go mad, and just very lightly, again, I've got to be careful because that's kind of a bit, um, a bit solid there. So it doesn't really matter. You can just start to texture in the in the background with the final spell is ready to work. The trouble is students tend to use my sponges as well and they don't wash them and if you don't wash sponges you end up with uh, big blobby things. So this is the final details in the background. I'm going in between and slightly over my branches and places. Get these yellow yellows. Don't forget you can drag with a sponge as well. Don't just push with it, you can drag it down as well to get the effects you want. And how one colour plays against another. Warm against the cool, light against the dark, rough against the smooth. So we've got the warm against the cool, and that will make the, um, the reds brighter. And bring out some of the greens. Drag that to make the effect of leaves before I go in with the brushes. And that's something that the Japanese and the Chinese are very good at as well, is that they use brush marks, but they also have a lot more history in their paintings that cherry blossom at various times of its development and of the year have uh, meanings. Um, and you know, the painting is, is not just a nice pretty picture, um, beautifully composed, but there's, there's, there's a story <coughs> But the beauty is that the way they use brushes to write with, that they're so fluid. Well, I mean, if I wanted to paint a flower with that brush, I've got petals already. I can just go around like that, and I can make petals. So we know that the field bit is good for that. If I wanted more pointed petals, if I was doing a sunflower or so on, I could use a, a round brush for the point. If I just want to slab on colour, as I'm going to do shortly with this, I should be using a, um, a flat brush a bit, a little bit more. But let's just um, have a look at these leaves. Now, I really want to use... I'm not going to use the golden yet, I'm going to see what I can get away with. First of all, just by slabbing these colours on. Let's just see what happens. There aren't there, but a nice big leaf here. And look at this lovely way we can just slab these colours on. Keep it clean, keep them pure. You want to say, really make it vibrate and sing. You see what I mean? Isn't it lovely to paint this heavier paint against the background? Now you can see how these work and how they're built up. You've just seen it happen. So even if we finish now, you've got the method. And you can see the way. Let's take it further. Let's, uh, let's go on because I want to show you the difference between these cools and warms. So you've, you've turned out to light and I think hopefully you're finding it worthwhile now. <laughs> and it, it sparkles, you know, you're starting to get the texture of what the rough gets of them. I think it's a little bit like when I tell people how to draw trees, think of a tree uh, as like an atomic bomb. The acorn comes down, hits the ground, spreads out, and, the, and the, the roots are just a smaller version of the tree upside down, remember. All trees grow the branches thick to thin. They never go thick, thin, thick, 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 thin. If they do, it's a burr, and a burr is a cancer of the tree, where it goes thicker and thinner. That's how you get those lovely veneers. Um, so all branches will go 
thick, thinner, thinner, thinner into twigs. Remember that when you're painting. Um, and that's what I've been doing here. And then the, the acorn sprouts up, it comes out and in umbrellas forms branches which then form leaves in layers of umbrellas and then those leaves drop off just like the bomb does down to the ground again. And if you think about it that way you can grow your own trees beautifully and if you just grow from thick to thin and remember that just some trees will go up and over like willow trees, some trees like pine trees come out in straight branches, but you can, it's, it's quite fun to grow your own trees on, on the canvas. Play against those cools in the background. If you remember, I made a very bluey cool at the beginning, didn't I? And now I want to come in with these warmer greens, making my marks about those branches. And so if you want me back, just you know, have a look on the, on, on, the, on the YouTube channel or whatever, or see what I'm doing. I'm trying to do something, because it's always uh, nice to come, uh, come and do something different for people. Obviously for you as well, because you want something you probably haven't seen before or haven't tried before. So say look at things like the, the acrylic inks and maybe a flower garden or um, other things that I do. White first of all. White is called a body colour and if you get a good quality paint, I use the Sennelia, <coughs> the bags of Sennelia for white and black. The cheaper paints don't have as much pigment in, they've got more filler. So, for instance, the, um, uh, the Crafts one, especially the Crafts, I do use the Prussian blue, but if you take a colour colour Prussian blue and put it next to it, it's much richer and darker. So be aware that the lights will be alright, usually with the cheaper colours, because they've got more chalk or filler in them, but your darks won't be as dark as you need, so you need better quality for the stronger colours or for the darks. And suddenly I'm painting with light. <coughs> I'm no longer painting with paint. To me now, I'm just enjoying these highlights and how everything changes because I planned earlier my cool in the background, my mid-tones down to my darks, and now I'm going back up to my lights and I haven't even gone anywhere near white. Not yet. So I've got plenty of room to play. And how warm it's going to go. For instance, I might use a little bit of pure, let's just use a bit of pure. There's a little bit of warmth, uh, of pure um, yellow ochre. All these lovely varieties. and uh, It's an abstract painting, isn't it? When we do figurative painting, we're always doing abstract as well. We've got to consider that these things are on a plane, that those leaves go back in dimensions. Now this is a bit of pure, um, it's not lemon, but it's this processed yellow which is quite a, a light, it's almost like a lemon yellow. Try to get in the right place now. And that needs some warmth with it, so I've got to take some warm and actually put that in there. I haven't even used any oranges yet. I'm still just playing between these. Now I'm going to go down to a stronger yellow, I'm going to use some chrome yellow, which is a lovely warm yellow, and it will make this light yellow really appear. Let's take a bit of this warm up here. You see, one colour next to another. We've got to play the warm and the cool, the light and the dark, the rough and the smooth to get these effects. You can go back to your sponge whenever you want. I could go back in with the sponge here if I want to. Let's put a little bit more magenta into that, pure magenta, to really get some of these warms going down here. just want to feel, I want to make the cools cooler, so by putting this bit of warmth in, I can make those cools appear cooler, some of these. The light against the dark. So we've been doing the warm against the cool, we've been doing the rough against the smooth. Um, now I'm putting more, not only the difference in the, the, the opposites in the colour circle, but I'm also going a bit darker with some of these objects to, to bring out the stones and <coughs> I was, I mean, you might not want the figure in, you know, it might be something that keep things simple, try and try and get the flow of the figure, try and, when you're doing figures or animals, just try and get the flow of them and try and keep it just to a few simple marks if you can. Otherwise and I find that with the portraits and things on these loose ones, if I botch one up, if I start to work on them, I've got to repaint that whole face. It's got to be done in a few marks, a few strokes, very cleanly, 
If you start to work too much, it stands out. And all we want is an impression. So I don't start painting in nostrils and I just give an impression to get what I want. So the whole thing is united. It's a whole effect of light and an impression. And I don't make a face stand out in particular. Same there, all I've done is an impression of those eyes and noses and mouths. And you see how that one mark is different to all the other darks. So this one, one mark can change everything, it really can. Let's do a little bit of orange in the foreground. We'll do a little bit of light orange just for the hell of it so you can really start to see. And I haven't yet been playing with really pure colours. I've only just been hinting at them. Now this is some cadmium orange. We'll just do a little bit more of that around here. Especially in the foreground here where the leaves are a bit lighter. And how that changes the picture again. So I would keep looking at this and adjusting and adjusting. Right, I want that to be a bit more golden. I'll take a bit more of the yellow into it with that orange. And we'll just bring some of those leaves of it. But when you think of the speed, uh, you, you know, if you're working doing a landscape, you want to be working at this sort of speed. Let's look at these lovely colours in the background now. I, should, I want to make these colours really sing, so I'm going to deliberately go for some of these really lovely bright, and push these colours a bit more now, and really make this painting sing. And you just keep playing with the light and having fun, painting with light. It's, it's, some of you will probably want to have a go, don't you know? It's, come and enjoy, you know? It, it's, uh, like, this is what I get carried away with, with doing a demo, I and mean, I'm, just, I'm just painting the colour, enjoying it now. Looking at these colours here, we need to draw the eye into it, we need to try to put the eye more forward. So let's take a little bit of this brighter green. One colour, just one colour, changes all the others around it. And it, it, can, it can be the one colour that's wrong, so it's not the thing you think it is, it's the one next to it. But it also might mean your painting isn't working because you haven't quite built up the amount of those colours that are required there to... And I'm constantly looking at the colours on here and all around. I'm not just painting that bit there. When I'm painting that bit there, I'm looking at this bit here. Because I'm thinking at the same time, does it need a bit of that colour in it? Yes, it does because I can now see it when it's on the brush and we use it. This is this jigsaw method. Well, I can keep fiddling. We've only got five minutes, so I think it's time for me to turn the camera around to face you guys. And I'll ask you a few questions. So, I think that's given you a good idea of how we can use the sponge roller, or we could use brushes in the background for a similar way of working up the background first, getting the effect of light, and then looking at cool, warmer, 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 more detail, and the big differences between light and dark, rough and smooth, warm and cool. Thank you very much for coming, and I hope you've all enjoyed it. I've certainly enjoyed being with you. And I'll put this up on YouTube, and you can see yourselves and it being done a bit closer to the screen, if you like. And hopefully I'll see you again in the future. <laughs>
take a little bit of serolene in this case to add to it, greens, and straight away we're getting some beautiful light, which we haven't got before. And I can see actually some of this is coming down into the leaves as well. And hopefully the thing is starting to improve. So we really get this effect of cascading light coming down through. much, much more improved already. So I'm going to make quite a strong viridian with emerald. Really try and get these greens happening just through here. You see the difference now as I play against the other colours. I'm going to go darker than that yet again in a minute. I feel I'm starting to get the amount of textures that I want now. Didn't have them before. Not quite anyway. And then when I do these big leaves again, I'll put the colours back strong, more strongly into here, you'll we'll be able to see them more clearly. I don't want to go to much warmer green now. So this is uh, more of a browny green, a mossy green if you like. I'm going to just darken it down a bit with a bit of sap green. So I want to get some of these deeper and darker greens up here, through here. I've got this lovely light blue and purple to blow through here yet, which I haven't got, so I'm suddenly noticing now. It really does need this amount of work more, it deserves it. Just going to wash my sponge. Now I need to look at the uh, pinks that are happening in here, there's a bit more of that. And into the water a little bit here and there too. This is before I come back and put some of these colours more strongly in with the brush. I just want some of the texturing happening here. Now the warmer blues, take some ultramarine. Let's just play with that a little bit, see how that goes. Especially up here, how that warmer blue can pull out those cooler ones. Before I come back in with the brushwork and making those even stronger. That's right, put the sponge away. Now I need to come back in with the brushes and uh, I need to start building up some of these lovely colours. Can't paint a thin end with them very easily, which I like to be able to do with decent brushes. That's one of the reasons I use these filberts and flats, is because I paint these thinner areas just by turning the brush onto its edge. And you can start to see the thing is pulling together more now than it was. That lovely very deep sap green that I'm quite fond of in these colours. This is the um, Specialist Crafts colour. It's very reasonably priced and uh, heavy body acrylic. It's a lot more solid now. All the smaller branches coming off. Now I can really start to see the texture working, I hope. One colour 
for the plague against the mother, some darker to bring out the, the light, some light to bring out the darks. I'm just going to keep doing all these little lines and lights and darks to really get this to work. I didn't have time in the evening to do all this, as you can gather, so I certainly need to do it now. I'm just starting to add a bit of black to it now to just get these trunks, these branches, a little bit darker. I'm starting to get more music into it. I always keep saying about painting to me being so close to music with the different tones and colours and textures of it. So I'm well on the way with it now. I've got to come back with these lovely bright colours in the foreground once I've got all of these little bits of dark sorted out here. To get this all really working first. A little bit more black just here in the foreground just to pull out the colours. Just here and there, not with more thought. It just does need those colours pushing back by having something pulling forward here. You can see what that black does now. Don't use black and white till the very end usually because it's <laughs> the furthest I can go each way, isn't it? So I can't use it until I know I don't need to go any further than that. So are we about ready now? We can put the highlights again back at the end. Let's, let's look now at um, doing these lovely bright leaves in the foreground again. Left, left off with them. I'm going to use some of these golden colours now, the yellows, a little bit heavier, more expensive, and we'll add some of the other less expensive colours as we go along. But let's just see what we can get with these lovely pure colours first of all here, which are so wonderfully light. And I really want to plaster them on, like I say this time, I want to get these lovely heavy light, um, bright, pure colours to happening through here, quite large. I'm should, I shouldn't be using a flat brush. I'm, I'm going to change my brushes a moment because I should be using a filbert for this to get filbert shaped leaves, not, um, not flat leaves. Horses for courses, round brush, round hole. Square brush, square hole. So let's see if we can find a round brush now and I'll just show you that difference. We're putting on colour with a fill, but we should really get a much more rounded edge. Yep. Because I do want leaf shapes and not square shapes. And this is primrose light yellow from Golden. A lovely colour actually. Not doing primroses yet, but I will perhaps have a go at them a bit later. I'm coming up here, right up into here. Lovely golden leaf here, 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 right through here. Pick up some of that paint and reuse it. And you can see how that pure colour now is reacting beautifully against the background. three-dimensional way, which is what I had that, that when I did the demonstration that day, but I've lost a bit of it since. And this is my brightest yellow, which I'd normally say for the end, but I've decided to put some of it on now, and then come back in with the softer yellows on top in a minute. So we're putting a cool yellow on, this primrose is like a lemon yellow, it's very cool. 
Try and make your marks about what you're doing all the time, so if a leaf has a spinal structure to it, well, you know, be aware of that. And we can look at the warmer yellows and take the next one down, which is a... And again, it's, it's, a, it's a creamier paint, it's not as, um, as thick as I'd like to use. I'm going to put a bit of uh, white with that last paint I was using and really make a very light cream. So that actually with white it gives a slightly warmer yellow which is interesting. Let's try that white with the other yellows and see how that works. Now I've got to go back to talking about greens, I've got to go back into these greens and turquoise is yet. Let's have a look and go up that. First of all I want to look at my very, very light viridian or emerald. But you know, we're playing this cool against these warmer colours in the background deliberately to, to make those seem warmer. We can't have one colour without another uh, either assisting it or working with it or complementary to it. And these were colours we hadn't really got time to consider in such a rush the other day doing the, doing the actual demo. I should normally put these bright cooler colours and shine of the, um, the light on at the end but today I'm just putting these on and adding the warmer colours afterwards because I've already got some colours there I guess that's one of my reasons anyway so that was our cooler greens now I need to go back to our warmer and start plastering on some lovely bright greens here and that's another good reason for choosing the right brushes this is a synthetic nylon, well actually nylon is synthetic, um, and it will take picking up the paint like this in nice heavy lumps. If I used a watercolour brush it wouldn't be able to do it. A watercolour brush would be okay if I was just doing some finer work, thinner paint, but for heavier paint like this I really do need a, a good chunky brush. to lather this paint on and you see how this, this warmer colour now you see what it's doing it's pushing back those other colours behind. I'm going to go warmer yet with my yellow and with my greens and I think I've finished but uh, no because I want to push these back more. There's all sorts of ways you can paint any picture. All sorts of methods, all sorts of mediums I'm just using this medium in this way because I th I'd like to choose the best method and medium to suit the subject and, and this way of painting this with acrylic to me is a lovely way to paint these lovely impasto colours on here and really get these singing colours. Clean my brush again and we'll go to some warmer yellows. Let's take from the um, original colours some lovely deep cadmium yellow, which really is a gorgeous yellow. And we'll find places for that down here. Oh, those warms come ahead of all of the others now because they are so much warmer. They really sing out here. Now you just start to see. Okay, going back to a, a turquoise, very light turquoise this time. Add some white to that. It might not be blue enough, it might be bluer. Let's just see how that cool works. Yes, it's about the same actually as I had before. I'm talking with different blues. I'm going to go down to the um, cerulean and just bring a little bit of the cerulean blue in here. With little strokes in the right place, just bringing out one colour against another. It's very, very light, warm, but light blue now. 
and to here to slightly warmer in a way. It looks almost a pink on this, but it isn't. So I'm not using pure white, not yet anyway. I'm just using a very light blue at the moment to feel this bit of water gesturally making marks down here. A bit of cream and white to go in later perhaps, but not quite yet. So although we could produce a painting very quickly, we're missing a lot of things if we do that often. I've got to come back and pick up on them again. Just a very, very light green now up here. But we're on the way. Should we white with just a little touch of lemon yellow? White. Just a little touch of the process here, if I need a pure enough white. A very, very light colour, just off pink. Because I want to try and just find these lovely little bits of light just here, which are cascading down into the water here. how they might be reflecting amongst the cools up here. Don't overdo it anywhere with any, any one colour, but just need some bits of colour here and there to bring out the opposites or the complementary. Watch where else they could be. I was talking about a much warmer green earlier on, which I haven't used yet much of. Let's see if I can make a difference with this one. It's a much, much warmer. Very yellow green, as long as a yellow green, that's what it's called. It's losing. Um, it's impetus a bit. I need to come in and around some of these leaves to bring them out again. This is ultramarine and white to give the warmer blue that's coming through some of these branches in the background here. So we can work lights over darks or we can work the darks around the lights as I'm doing now. Impression, and we'll just look at these branches a bit more as well. Just want to add a bit more warmth into the background. It's a big jump between the cools and the warm, so let's just take a wee bit of yellow ochre and just see what happens if we just warm some of this up a little bit in the background here and there, just to link it a bit better because it's a little bit too cool and isn't playing one against another enough for my liking. Some deep purple. Just looking at the darks and the trees, I want to just see what happens if I take some lovely rich deep purple and just add it into these trees to bring out the colours against the purple, which is here. It would be rather nice to have the purples playing just a little bit more foreground here against these yellows, I think. You can right down into there. You see how that just makes it sing a bit more. You've got to keep in mind all the time the colour circle and chemistry of colour and how that purple can push those leaves forward just a little bit here and there push everything forward a 
There we go then. Must be almost there. Very, very close to being there. So we'll sign it. What colour shall we sign it? Interesting. Um, it could be a light blue, it could be a light cream. I think possibly a light cream. Well there we are, then the demonstration taken a bit further and pushing the colours a bit more, clarifying them, looking at the warms and cools and the lights and darks and so on and the textures as well, making a much I think richer painting. Mm -hmm.